getting that footage before Erlang rework. You're goddamn right. Today, we become legends. So it appears the elephant in the room finally got too much to handle for high res and they pulled the trigger on reworking our boy Erlang Shen. This is a god I really love and he's in my top 10 gods for worshippers, pretty much always has been, however he was extremely polarizing in the jungle. I've even stated myself before that Erlang is pretty much always a top 3 jungler in every meta, even if people don't know it. Well that has now changed for sure so let's discuss the Erlang rework in full detail and try to decipher where he's going to go next in terms of playstyle, role and builds, as well as how strong he's going to be after the rework. So right off the bat, this is a minor rework, similar in scale to that of Thor or Odin where a handful of things are changed majorly but it's not a full kit rework. His actual abilities remain mostly the same, just the stats, damage and effects on those abilities have been shifted around and new ones have been added, even one was removed. So let's get straight in with the passive changes. So Erlang's dog has undergone a lot of changes over the years, from being able to crit and proc other item effects like kin size, stone cutting sword and stuff like that, to just dealing max percent health damage, to that getting nerfed because it was broken, well it's being nerfed again but with an interesting buff that might make this a side grade rather than a straight up nerf. Let's take a look at the math. So essentially what's happening with Erlang's passive is that the power scaling is coming down and the max health scaling is going up. In fact almost up to the same level where it was pretty broken at in season 5 when it was initially changed, that was 2% and he's now at 1.75%. From the these two tables we can get a rough idea of how much of a damage gain or loss this would be versus different targets at different stages of the game. We can see that of course the power scaling went down, the max HP scaling went up, but that's the obvious part. To decide how strong this change really is we need to take into account how much he is losing versus how much he is gaining and see if the change is a net positive. From this limited data it appears that he's losing more damage overall than he's gaining in almost every situation. Be that early game with low max health and low power, late game with high max health and high power, this is a nerf in most circumstances. However, that's just in the context of current Erlang where he's run as a jungler with a lot of power. We can see that if you're building Erlang with 50 power only and hitting a target with 3k HP or above, you actually gain damage quite significantly per hit of the dog. This is the most extreme example but even at 200 power when hitting a 3k target you gain damage after the rework versus before. The damage loss is mostly coming from targeting squishies and or building power. This is consistent with the general idea of the rework bringing Erlang more into the solo lane and building tankier as opposed to his jungle presence and damage focus that he has right now. But that's just one aspect of the rework. All of Erlang's abilities except his two were changed in this update so let's get into those now. The first of course being his 1 which received arguably the most major changes maybe alongside his 3. The damage per hit on the 1 is being gutted, losing 11 base damage and 5% scaling at max rank but keep in mind that's per hit and the buff lasts 5 seconds. With Erlang's faster than normal hit chain you can easily get in 10 buffed autos in the late game when you have some attack speed online. At 10 autos the nerf takes off 110 base and 50% power scaling, the scaling of course being the main thing here which again is consistent with the rework philosophy. However to compensate for the massive blow to the one's damage it now has two additional effects. 4% scaling up to 20% lifesteal when active and 3% scaling up to 7% damage reduction on targets for 3 seconds with 3 stacks max, so 9% to 21% damage reduction when fully stacked. And this is where you realise that Erlang is still broken after the rework, just in a different way. The up to 20% lifesteal is really nice given how often this ability is up. It lasts 5 seconds and the 1 second CDR every time you basic someone means spot weakness is pretty much active half the time. If this does become the go to ability to level in lane which I fully expect it to, having 20% lifesteal half the time you're boxing or clearing in solo is going to be insanely useful. This is also nice for his jungle but sustain is a little less important there than in the chart lands of solo lane. But not only does he get insane uptime lifesteal buffs which would also stack with items like death toll, he also gets insane uptime damage reduction that can stack up to 21% max. I honestly have no idea what they're thinking with these numbers. I love the idea of damage reduction on the one, I think it's a great way to bring him more into solo or support playstyle. This ability alone reduces damage by 6% more than Horrific Emblem does which is a relic on a 130 second base cooldown. This ability has like a 5 second cooldown considering the refund on basic attacks. Before anyone comments that Horrific Emblem can hit the whole team, I know, I'm being a little facetious here but this level of damage reduction is just not okay and should be nerfed before it even hits live or Erlang will be as broken as ever, if not more so. It's a spicy take but Erlang 1 if left like this is the best basic ability in the entire game, no cap. His 2 pin was unchanged so moving on to the 3 which is the next most changed ability after the 1 for sure. The first and biggest change is that the turtle form no longer knocks up. This is honestly the only major nerf Erlang took in this rework but it's one of the hugest nerfs of all time. That knock up is like 80% of the reason Erlang has as much lockdown as he does since it doesn't DR, is instant and recovers quickly so you can keep wailing on them with basic attacks in the air. Losing the turtle cancel is going to be a gigantic blow to Erlang and it's the only reason I'm not saying he's flat out broken after seeing the one changes. 
This doesn't quite balance it out entirely in my opinion given the other changes to the three that are pretty much buffs, but it's nothing to scoff at. Those changes are 15% movement speed for 4 seconds after using the Minx so you can chase down the targets with the attack speed a little better, and to compensate for the no knockup, the turtle health shield now scales with your protections from items and abilities at 75%, so effectively the shield will be huge now. Given solos often have around 200 of each props by full build, you're looking at a solid 300 HP boost to the shield. It'll definitely be more useful as a shield now, but unfortunately that's the only use it will have given the knockup's gone. Turtle cancel will still be a thing of course since you can just deal the damage, get the shield and cancel the animation to not waste time, but the lockdown that this ability once provided will be no more. After ulting, Erlang pretty much now just has his 2, which while still not DR'd because it's a root, it is cleansable with beads unlike the knockup and can be jumped out of since it's not a root cripple like it was at release, it's just a root. Honestly, I would have been okay with them shifting the knockup off the 3 if they added the cripple back to the 2, but I can see why they didn't given he's already strong and will still be strong after this rework. The final change made here was just a decent increase to the ult's mitigations as you rank it up, 5% at the top end. The ult combined with the 1 would now mean Erlang takes 41% less damage from the target he's on with the 1, that's pretty insane and he's definitely going to feel a lot tankier when boxing and diving just from that damage reduction alone. Not to mention the shield which is now like 550 HP instead of 230 and also gets value from the damage reduction effects in the kit. Erlang is for sure going to have a very different playstyle after the rework. His main CC is gone so I don't expect him to play like a traditional solo warrior because he really doesn't have the lockdown to do it anymore. After a 1 second taunt he really has nothing unless his target can't jump or dash to escape the follow up too. I expect him to play much more like a brawler who plays for the long fights instead of bursting and just sticks to people, a bit like Gilgar or Bologna. He'll 100% be viable in solo, his boxing might even beat Bologna's boxing now which is honestly just insane, it's going to be really hard to fight into 20% damage reduction and 20% lifesteal. The damage reduction only applies to gods sadly so no soloing FG once you get your 1 maxed and have Zerg shield. In terms of his jungle viability, I think he'll be fine there, but mostly by virtue of him still being really strong after the rework. I think his pure jungle viability, not considering how strong the god is, will go down, but since he's still likely to be OP, I think he might still see play there. The extra movement speed from Mink is an addition that's even better for jungle Erlang than it is for solo Erlang, and the ult is just a straight up buff, but other than that, these changes are all pretty negative for jungle damage Erlang, and pretty positive for solo bruiser Erlang. And finally, I'll touch a little bit on support. I don't expect too much support out of this, but people will try it for sure. I think if they left the knockup alone, he would have been solid in support, but I guess if they did that, he'd just be in every role. That's like 80% of the nerf power in this rework is just losing that knockup and not being compensated with CC elsewhere. Erlang is going to be a huge lane bully now, so maybe in support he could still see play just to get pressure and then have a more CC oriented solo or jungle, but just as the main support pick, I don't think Erlang is there really. But that's it for my thoughts on the Erlang rework. He's a god I've been playing for years and I was fully expecting a rework of some kind to come his way soon, be that this kind of rework where they make him more tanky and slot him into solo, or a rework like Raven's where they abandon his tanky aspects just to make him an assassin jungler with minor solo viability. I think the one is just going to be so much fun to abuse if it releases at this stat level, but I'm definitely sad to see the knockup go. At release, he had the taunt, knockup, and root cripple, so you couldn't jump out of his two, and he was an absolute menace, even in support at release. But to see his main two CCs gone now is a bit sad, and I'll definitely, and it'll definitely change his playstyle majorly. But that's all I got. Catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.